think we are all set up. And I hope everyone can hear me okay. I had some problem with audio this morning. So um, anyways, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Happy Friday. And uh, welcome to the Riverwood Conservancy's Fall BioBloods kickoff event. I am so excited. I've been waiting a very long time um, for this program to be up and running. So I'm so excited that we are starting and hopefully you're all excited as well to get involved. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm the Community Program Coordinator at the Riverwood Conservancy and I hope everyone is having a great start to their October, it's spooky season. Um, I wanna say huge thanks, first of all, and a shout out to Climate Impact. Uh, they're making this program as well as BioBlitz and upcoming climate change programs possible. Climate Impact's mission is to fund local climate education and action initiatives to empower citizens to create a sustainable and resilient future. So one program they're supporting us with right now is the upcoming, or I guess current BioBlitz starting today, which is um, aiming to better understand the impact climate change is having specifically on our biodiversity. So um, throughout this BioBlitz, we're trying to see as many species as possible and understand um, if there's been any impacts from climate change on the species that live at Riverwood. So that's the whole intention behind this program and today we're going to be getting into what a Bible is, how to join and what to take images of as well. So thanks again for joining. Um, before we get started on the presentation, I do have some updates from October and I'm just going to switch to my calendar. There we go. So on your screen now, you should see an entire calendar of events for October. Anything in green is in-person events and anything in yellow is virtual webinars like what we're on right now. Anything not highlighted is actually full at this point. So we have the salmon run and the fall bio blitz fungi walk that are completely full, unfortunately, but we do have a lot of other cool um, programs coming up too. So to go along with this month-long bio blitz, we also have a wildflowers walk on October 16th, and that has a couple of spaces still available. So if you want to, I really suggest uh, joining right now. Um, and also October 22nd, we have the birding walk for uh, the fall bio blitz. So each of those bio blitz walks, we will walk through how to use iNaturalist and then we'll actually get out in the field and get some species down as well. So um, you will have kind of an upper hand if you join those programs too. And I'll actually just post um, some links in the chat right now for everybody so that you can check those out. And uh, you can register for any events at the riverwoodconservancy.org slash events. If you are a member of Riverwood, um, all community discovery events, which you see on the calendar right now, are now free for members. So individuals are $35, seniors are $25, and if you have family that wants to come to a program, it is $50. Um, to bring your kids along. And those members are annual memberships, so they're a year long and they get you into any of the community discovery events for free, which is awesome. So if you're planning on going to more than one, it's worthwhile. And if you have any questions about this, you can post it in the chat as well, and I'm happy to answer those questions. And before we get to the presentation today, the Riverwood Conservancy would like to acknowledge that the land on which we operate is the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional homeland of the Anishinaabe, Wendat, and Haudenosaunee Nations. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this place is still home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people, and we are so grateful to have the opportunity to live and work on this land. And um, yesterday was Orange Shirt Day, and I hope everybody wore their orange shirt um, and got out there. Um, if you have any questions today, please post in the Q&A section and any just comments can go in the chat bar. And if you're watching on Facebook, you can comment down below. I have you up on my other screen too. So I will see your comments if you're watching from Facebook. Uh, the whole point of this webinar today is to walk through how to use the, the tech and what a BioBlitz is all about. So please ask as many questions as you'd like, and we will get to answer those too. So thanks so much once again. 
So we're just going to watch this short video that uh, Riverwood created. Um, it's kind of like a short three minute promo video and um, it will just briefly explain to you how, uh, what a BioBlitz is and how to get involved. And you can watch this on our YouTube page. It's very short. Riverwood is an 150 acre urban nature preserve that provides a haven for plants and animals to thrive in the bustling city of Mississauga. Unfortunately, due to climate change, there's been an extensive strain on the wildlife that call Riverwood home, and that's why we need your help. Through the amazing support from Climate Impact, the Riverwood Conservancy hopes to better understand the impacts climate change has on Riverwood's urban biodiversity by hosting a community bioblitz throughout the month of October. A bioblitz is a temporary citizen science effort to record as many species as possible within a specific location and time. We will be using iNaturalist to submit, record, and keep track of the ongoing bioblitz, watch leaderboards, and keep up to date with images that have been submitted and species that have been seen. To get involved, download iNaturalist on your mobile device or visit iNaturalist.org on your browser and create an account. Then search TRC Fall BioBlitz 2021 and simply click join to begin. Now it's time for the fun part. Get outdoors and begin observing. Take pictures of anything you see in the environment. Take this um, bee, for example. You stumbled upon a bee resting on some freshly bloomed goldenrod. Take an image of the bee that features its main characteristics. Now, upload that image to iNaturalist. This can be done in the field using a mobile device, or images from your camera can be submitted on the iNaturalist webpage. Most mobile devices and cameras already have the date, time, and exact location you took your observation associated with the image. When you click the What Did You See button, iNaturalist will use image recognition to try to narrow down what that species is. For this example, it was the first recommended option, a common eastern bumblebee. Species 1 is in the books. Observations can be images of a species of plant or animal you saw while visiting Riverwood, or it can be a track left behind by a species, like a nest, footprint, scat, fur, or even a leaf. From the smallest to the largest species, there is so much to explore. The fall season is the season of change and you will be able to capture different species every week as some species migrate, slow down, and even emerge during different times in October. To top it all off, we will be giving away a grand prize to the account with the most species observations by the end of October and a prize to one lucky randomly selected participant. We remind everyone joining the BioBlitz to leave no trace. Remember to stay on the trails, leave everything you find in nature, respect wildlife, and dispose of any litter. By coming together, we can build an understanding and hope for the future of Riverwood. Okay, so that's just a quick short, um, oh, and it's playing again. That's just a, a quick, video that we have on our YouTube page. So if you want to watch it again, feel free, but we'll be going through everything that was covered in that video in length during this webinar today. And I do have one question that just came in about the two programs that are full, even before today, will there be any more? So in terms of the salmon uh, run programs, there will not be any more of those. There is um, a second salmon run that same day at 1 p.m. that's not full yet. So. If you're interested in going to that one, check it out. Um, the fungi walk, we are looking into hopefully offering another one for that um, because it filled up very, very quickly. But then the other two bio blitz walks, which are birding and wildflowers, those are not full yet. So um, if you intend on joining the bio blitz, I really, really recommend uh, registering for those as well. That's a great question. Okay, so today we will be going through what a BioBlitz is, how to use iNaturalist on your phone or computer, what to take images of for the BioBlitz, and then we'll do contest rules and prizes as well, which is everyone's favorite part, because we have some really cool prizes um, this year. So what is a BioBlitz? 
A bio blitz is a temporary citizen science effort. So um, citizens and the public coming together um, to make a difference is what citizen science is basically. A temporary citizen science effort to record as many species as possible within a specific location and time. So when it says species, species can be plants, trees, wildflowers, weeds, um, animals, birds, mammals, insects, fish, reptiles and amphibians, live or dead, um, and fungi as well. And I add in fungi because fall is a great time to see fungi and uh, you'll see lots of mushrooms and um, different sorts of things on Riverwoods trails right now. So this is a really, really great time of year to see those. So you can add those to your species list um, in the bio list as well. Uh, within a sp specific location. So it has to be within Riverwood. You're taking images only within Riverwood. Anything outside the boundary of Riverwood would not be added to the bio blitz. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when we're joining um, the actual bio blitz, what that means. So here on is uh, just a map of where the boundaries are of Riverwood here, and there's Burnenthorpe Road. So if you've been to Riverwood before, these are the boundaries. And there's Arendelle Go Station as well, if you're familiar with that. And then um, within a specific location and time. So for our BioBlitz, we will be doing it between October 1st and October 31st, 2021. We have another BioBlitz that's going to be coming up in the springtime that's in partnership with Climate Impact as well, but I'll be doing a whole other webinar when it gets closer to that as well. So for this one, it's just the month of October, um, any time of day. A lot of times BioBlitz, um, they're short periods of time. So a month might seem like a long time, but that is still pretty short. Um, for example, Credit Valley Conservation just wrapped up their butterfly bio blitz, which was, I think, five or six months long, whereas other like birding bio blitz will just be a day long. So it really varies. But for ours, it's going to be a month. And if you have any questions about that, let me know in the Q&A or the comment section. So how to use iNaturalist on phone or computer. So we're going to be going through this slowly. I really recommend if you have your phone with, with you today, you can follow along on your phone if you intend on using it on your phone. I do find it's a little bit more user friendly on your phone and easier, especially when you're out in the field. Um, but you can also follow along on the website too, if you would like. Um, and if you have any questions, once again, post them down. So this is what the iNaturalist logo looks like this right here. And like I said, you can use it on your phone or your laptop or your computer. We're going to be starting with iNaturalist on your phone. So what you want to do is you want to open your app store um, on Andro Android or iPhone, and you're just going to search iNaturalist. And this is the logo you will be looking for. This logo, this little green bird, that is what you will be downloading. And this webinar is recorded, so if I go too quickly and you can't follow along as well, um, I, it will be recorded. It will be on our Facebook page and on your YouTube page, so you can always go back and watch again. And then you're going to make an account on um, iNaturalist. It's a completely free app, so don't worry about paying or anything like that. You're going to make an account with your email and a, and a password, and then you're all set to go. Then what you'll do to join the project, this is still using only your phone. Step one is you'll go down to projects on the far right hand corner. Now this is on iPhone. So if you have an Android, it may look a little bit different, but look for something that says projects. That's what your first step's gonna be. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna search in the search bar TRC Fall BioBlitz 2021, and our project will come up with our logo as well. And you're going to just click that logo. And then number three is it will bring you to the page. So I took this screenshot this morning um, of our BioBlitz page, and it says there are no observations for this project yet because this BioBlitz just started today. So no one has submitted any images yet but uh, I'm sure this will start filling up very soon as well. And then what you're gonna press is you're actually gonna press join. So where it says leave right here, that's actually because I'm part of the BioBlitz. Um, so mine says leave, 
but yours will say join because you're you're no you're not um, actually on the project yet. So just press join, and that's all you got to do. So once you click join, you are good to go. You're part of the project. If you're at Riverwood and you're taking images between October first and thirty first. All of your images that you submit to iNaturalist will automatically be put in this project. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so next, how to add observations on your phone using your phone. So number one, you're going to go down to the bottom middle button where it says observe. And then you have two kind of options that you can use. The first one is camera. So if you were out in the field and you see a bumblebee, for example, and you have your phone with you, you can press camera and just take that image off of iNaturalist. Just take the image with iNaturalist. Or this is what I do is I use my camera roll. So I go to Riverwood and I take a hundred pictures of random species all over Riverwood. And in my camera roll, I keep, keep all of those different species. So I have tons and tons of pictures of different things. Then when I get home and I have Wi-Fi, I use iNaturalist and I just use, I press camera roll and I just submit all of those images that I've taken. So instead of taking the images actually in the field where you may have to use data, just take a bunch of photos with your camera on your phone out in the field. And then when you come home and you can use Wi-Fi and just click on camera roll and then select those images and submit it. And if you have questions about that, please let me know. So this is a first example. So I selected camera roll and then I saw something flying uh, above my head um the other day and this is an image here from my camera roll and there's a little tiny dark spot right there that is the bird that i am observing so i took that picture and then i i took it from my camera roll and i uploaded it now with a lot of our phones and even if you're going to be using a camera as well a lot of our phones and our cameras they actually have um, the location associated with them as well as the date and time. So when you upload these images to iNaturalist, the location will be usually uploaded. You don't have to do anything here. It's usually associated with the image. So Riverwood Park Lane is where I saw it. And then the date will also be attached to that image as well. And that way it makes it super easy. If you're taking photos, you don't actually have to track where you were. Your photos usually do that on your own. But if anybody has any troubles with this, um, let me know. You can drop me an email and I can help you out with figuring out how to do um, submissions if you don't have this kind of tech. But most phones uh, track where all images are, are taken. So the next thing you'll do is you'll click, what did you see? And when you click, what did you see? iNaturalist uses image recognition to actually look at that image and see what they think that species is. So the first thing that will pop up is either the family or the genus right here. So it says, we're pretty sure this is in the family of Cypridae and that's hawks, eagles, and kites. So um, that is, they're pretty sure whatever I saw out in the field was in this section. And then they say, here are our top 10 species suggestions. So we're really looking for species. And so their top suggestion is actually a bald eagle. And so that is correct. I selected bald eagle. So when you click on that, it puts the bald eagle in that spot. It has the date, the location, and that's all you need to know. And then you just click share. And that's it. And then that will be immediately uh, put into the project and that will be your first species that you have. Now on the computer, it's a little bit different. So if you have a camera like this, you may want to um, download all your images off your camera and put it on your computer. There is a couple more steps that you have to do in that case. It's not as easy and just um, quick and in your fingers, but um, if that's an option, uh, 
if that's if, if this is what you want to use a higher resolution camera then feel free to do that as well so you can download it on to your computer and then you can submit through the website and i see there's a question about the tiny picture so uh that's a great question um they said how could you tell from that tiny picture so this isn't a really great image sorry about that um it just looks tiny because of I actually screen captured it from my iPhone. Um, I'll try to look at where that photo actually is. It's much larger than what it looks like here, um, but I'll try to get that full blown up photo for you so that you can see as well. Actually, maybe I can do that right now. <laughs> Just one second, everyone, that's a good question. I may have to show it at the very end. I'll continue on and then I'll show the picture at the very end. It just looks small because of uh, because of how I, I screen captured that picture on my phone. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll show that later on. It's a good question. Now, when you are on the computer, you go to uh, inaturalist.com. Uh, oh, sorry, inaturalist.org. And when you go there, you'll sign in just like you did on your iPhone. And then what you'll do is you'll go under community. And under community, you'll click on project. So this is very similar to what we did on the iPhone. And then in this little space bar, you'll type in TRC Fall BioBlitz 2021. You'll click go and it will bring us to your um, to the project. So right now we are in progress in progress. The event is in progress because it started this morning. Um, TRC Fall BioBlitz 2021, October 1st, 2021 to October 31st. Right now we have 19 people that are signed up in this top right corner. And this is actually where it will say join. So when you are going to join on a website, if you'd prefer to do everything on the computer as opposed to your Android or iPhone, um, it will say join up here for you. If you're using your computer, you just click join and then you'll see um, the little number of people will go up to 20 or hopefully more as we continue on. And then if you want to upload images from your computer, it's the same process. You press the green button at the top corner. It says upload. You can either drag and drop some photos or you can choose files. So this is on your computer. It's quite similar to the iPhone, um, but you just select any photos that are on your computer and you can submit it. And it's the same exact process of um, finding out what species that is. Now, what to take images of? Um, this is an, often a question that we get, and uh, it's really anything that you see. So um, the first thing I'm going to say is to leave no trace. So when you're at Riverwood, make sure that you're not leaving any traces. You're planning ahead. You're disposing of any waste that you brought with you. Uh, you leave what you find behind. So no picking of any plants or mushrooms or anything like that. Leave everything that you find in the wilderness. Um, and uh, let it do what it's supposed to do. Um, stay on the trail, of course, is a huge one. Um, we've seen a really big increase in unsanctioned trails um, all over Riverwood, which is unfortunate. Um, so really make sure that you're staying on a sanctioned trail, a trail that's supposed to be there when you are taking images of our um, plants and animals that you can find at Riverwood and make sure you're not trampling on any plants if you are trying to take a picture. And then the last thing is to respect wildlife. If you do see any sort of wildlife, make sure that you keep your distance, take a picture. It's okay if it's a little bit blurry. iNaturalist is really, really good at um, understanding what that species is using, using image recognition, which is pretty cool. 
So you can take pictures of birds. A lot that you'll see are chickadees. That's probably gonna be the, the number one observation at Riverwood. Chickadees, woodpeckers, ducks, um, turkey vultures, like this one here, uh, all sorts of different animals. So take pictures of them. And once again, these are nice photos. They're, they're very, um, they're, they're well done. They're likely done with a nicer camera. A lot of my submissions that I take um, for iNaturalist are not this high definition. They are not this great. Um, a lot of them are just iPhone photos. Some of them are so far in the distance, but you can, if, as long as you can see some characteristics of that animal, um, you're good to go really, uh, especially with these kinds of species that, that um, are very easy to identify. Um, with insects, it's a little bit different because you do kind of have to get specific um, features on them for, for it to actually be able to be identified, but I'll go into that in a second. Mammals are also a good one. If you uh, are at Riverwood and see a squirrel, which I'm sure you can't really go to Riverwood without seeing a squirrel, they're all over the place. So you can take pictures of squirrels, red squirrel, gray squirrel, um, chipmunks as well, and add that onto iNaturalist. Uh, raccoons, foxes, I actually saw a fox last night. Um, right outside of Riverwood on Burnenthorpe Road, which was pretty cool. Um, so that can be added to iNaturalist as well. Um, any kind of small mammal, um, large mammals, if you see a coyote or a deer as well, you can add those to iNaturalist. Reptiles and amphibians. If you want to take pictures of reptiles and amphibians, you really have to start getting out there in the next coming weeks because they are slowing down and they will start beginning to uh, hibernate or their version is brumation. So I did see some frogs a couple days ago, actually lots of frogs a couple days ago in Chapel Creek. The turtles are still out. Uh, somebody said they found a DK's brown snake on the trail the other, the other day. So they are still out. There is enough sunshine and warmth for them still, but as it gets colder, you may not be able to take pictures of these species and add them to your species list. So I recommend getting to Riverwood as soon as possible if you wanna capture some of these species as well. And the one that I think you can probably get the most species out of are insects. Insects are often overlooked. Um, when it comes to bio blitzes, but these are very important and it shows how many species of insects there truly is. This, um, all of these photos were taken within one day at Riverwood. And I was just looking on goldenrod and in our gardens and on asters and in the grasses. And there are so many little insects that are hiding. And um, I really recommend going and looking at the smaller things as well, because these can be added to your species list. Here's five different species um, just within one day that I found, which is pretty cool. And what you do is you just take these photos with your phone, go home, go on iNaturalist and submit all of these photos um, on iNaturalist and iNaturalist will use image recognition. It will suggest a species for you. You can select that species and then add it to your list. And what happens is people from the community will actually say, yes, that is that species, or they'll say, no, I think it might be this species actually. And you can go back and forth and actually figure it out. So it's pretty cool. Also fish, we have uh, the salmon run that's currently going on in the Credit River. You can add fish. And this is a great um, example actually, because you can add pictures of live or dead animals as well. So um, the salmon run happens every fall and after the salmon spawn, they actually die and you'll find a bunch of uh, salmon along the shores of the Credit River, um, which is really great for the environment. Like they add a lot of nutrients to our water and um, to Lake Ontario as well. So you can take images of these too and add them on your list if you'd like. The last thing I'll say is take lots of pictures of plants. Uh, plants are another um, area that will get you lots and lots of species. There's tons of different plants in the fall, fall wildflowers, weeds, um, even some plants like this one at the bottom, poison ivy. Um, you could take pictures of those as long as you know what you're touching. Don't touch anything that you don't know because <laughs> um, poison ivy will give you some itchy rashes. And then the last thing, 
that um, a lot of people don't think that they can add, but this is great, um, is tracks and signs from animals. So you don't have to capture a picture of a animal in the wild. You can take pictures of the tracks that are left behind. So um, nests, um, there's two nests here. So one is from some sort of wasp, paper wasp, I believe. Um, so you could take a picture of a nest. This nest is from a squirrel in the wintertime. You could take pictures of those and those will identify as those species because those species created those. Um, tracks or footprints, um, obviously there's no snow, but in the mud, you can um, submit like a coyote track or a deer track. Leaves as well, leaves are a great, oh, sorry. Leaves are a great um, way to identify what kind of trees are in the area. So if you wanna pick up leaves and add those leaves to your list, it will actually identify as that species of tree. And also scat, um, <laughs> which you may look a little bit crazy if you're like down, down on your hands and knees and like taking pictures of scat. Um, but you can also take pictures of scat. Like this one here would be identified as a rabbit um, that we have at Riverwood too. So any tracks that are left behind, feathers, uh, bones, scat, nest, footprints, um, can't think of anything else, but anything that the animals left behind. Uh, for example, if you use iNaturalist and you take picture of garbage on the trail, it will actually identify that garbage as human, which is pretty funny because humans are the only ones that could have created that um, trash too. So any tracks and signs they work too. And at Riverwood, we have over 1,400 plant species, 180 resident and migratory bird species. So birds are beginning to migrate. This is another thing that you kind of have to get out there soon um, to capture as many species as possible uh, because we do have some migratory species that will be leaving Riverwood in the next coming weeks. But we do have our resident species. So those birds that hang around all year long that you'll be able to take pictures of too. And then we have 55 mammal species too. So keep your eye out for those. Contest rule and winning prizes. And then at the end, I'll answer any questions and I'll actually bring up um, iNaturalist on uh, the website too to look through. So you must join the project TRC Fall BioBlitz 2021 on iNaturalist. Images must be taken at Riverwood. Images must be taken between October 1st and October 31st. They must be personal images only, so you have to have taken them. And one account will win the grand prize, and another account will win um, by being randomly selected, which is great. And this account can be individual, so it can just be you, or it can be a family contributing together. So if you are a family um, with like three kids and you all want to use one phone to take pictures, that's absolutely fine as well. Only one account will win, but um, the family is allowed to contribute together. So this is the winning prize, and this will be to the account with the most species observation, which we talked about at the start. So you will get a double suet feeder, two uh, suet blocks for the suet feeder. You'll get a signed Wildflowers of Riverwood, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome book. Um, it's just, it's one of my favorite books I think ever. And it's specific to Riverwood, but really the entire Southern Ontario, it's, it's relevant too. And then Dear World by Dave Taylor. So there'll be a signed copy of Dear World by Dave Taylor as well. So this is um, about a hundred dollar value of a prize and it's just super cool, super exciting. And it's all relevant to fall too. And what it means when it says to the most species observations. So when you go on iNaturalist and you click under observers, right here, observers, you will see um, the list of observers and the number um, of which they rank. So we are looking under this value. So you can take 600 photos or observations but maybe only 300 of those are different species. So we're looking for the person with the most species observations. So if you came to Riverwood and you took 600 photos of just a chickadee, 600 observations of chickadees, that would only be one species under here. 
So we're really looking to learn more about the biodiversity at Riverwood. And that that's why it's so important that we, um, we the prize is for the most species observation. So try to take pictures of all sorts of different kinds of species that you find. It's okay to, to do double, um, double observations. Like if you do see 10 chickadees, take pictures of them and add them. Um, you'll only get one species for that, but it's still super awesome to have that data as well. Once again, any questions, please post them in the chat or in the Q&A section. And then one lucky winner will um, be randomly selected and will get wildflowers of Riverhood, which is Great. It's by um, Nina Barrerbess. So she'll actually be leading the wildflowers walk for the BioBlitz. Um, and she's just um, amazing. The walk's going to be great. Um, and you can actually win one of her books um, with all sorts of photos in it and descriptions of those wildflowers. And all you have to do is sign up for the project. Just put your name down into iNaturalist in the project, join the project, and you have a chance to win this book. It's all you have to do, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So that will be randomly selected at the end of October too. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. I wonder if we have any questions. I'm going to look for that eagle photo right now to try and show you what I mean. But if you have questions now, I will take them. I'm just going to look for that photo. And any questions that you may have? I will take them now. Thanks so much. I hope everyone joins. I see a question. What do you prefer, phone or camera? That is a great question. Absolutely. Um, when using iNaturalist, phone all the way. Um, if, if you want to take great photos um, and, and have lots of details in those photos, then a nice camera is great for that. But... I mean, iPhones and Androids, sometimes they can take uh, better photos close up than a camera can. And it's a lot less work with a phone because you have all of the information, you have the photos on your phone, you can just easily submit it to the app. Whereas if you take photos on your camera, then you have to download it onto your computer, and then you have to download those onto iNaturalist. So I prefer for the BioBlitz to use my phone. And then when I'm whenever I'm just walking at Riverwood if I see species I can just take pictures with my phone instead of intentionally uh, bringing my camera along I don't bring my camera everywhere with me so I do prefer to use the phone that's a good question okay I'm just looking it's maybe harder to find but let's see any other questions And like I said too, um, it's okay if, if you submit something and you don't identify it properly or the image recognition doesn't work properly, that's okay. People may say that it's incorrect. They may suggest something else, but don't worry about it. Um, I've gotten so many things wrong on iNaturalist. iNaturalist is for citizen scientists. And if you get something wrong, someone will correct you, but that's okay. It's all part of it. And I actually found that photo for you, which is awesome. So let me just share my screen here. Um, so here is the photo that I uploaded. It is very tiny, as you can tell. Um, if you zoom in, this is, this is what I'm talking about. The photo does not have to be perfect, but you can tell from the photo with the white head, the white tail, that it is a bald eagle. So... This is the photo I submitted and it shows the location and the time. And then I suggested an ID of a bald eagle, you can see here. And then some other accounts also agreed. They said, yes, this is a bald eagle. And it was submitted um, to our account, which is pretty awesome. So I hope that answers your question. Um, the photos do not have to be high definition. They do not have to be super close up. Um, it does sometimes help. Sometimes you can identify something when it's super far away, especially when it comes to insects um, and sometimes bird species, especially birds that are in fall plumage. It's hard to kind of identify them unless the photo is really, really nice and close up. But that's okay. Um, phones work proper, just fine. And this photo was actually taken 
with my phone. As you can tell, it's not great quality, but still they could identify it as a uh, bald eagle. Okay. Okay, so there is another question. Uh, new to using phone, do I go into iNaturals to take to take photo, I, th I believe, to take photo or use camera and its links? So you can do either. Um, let me go to that again. That's a great question. So what you're going to do is you're going to download iNaturalist. Step one, and create an account. I'll just share my screen one more time. So once you've downloaded iNaturalist and you've created an account, what you'll see is this button down here that says observe, which is how you're going to actually observe anything. And then it gives you two options. So you have the option to use your camera. If you do not have data, I really suggest just taking photos and not even using iNaturalist in the field, just waiting until you get home. Using your camera on your phone, take pictures of as many things that you see at Riverwood. You do not need data for that. So it's just in your camera roll. Then when you get home, you press observe, you press camera roll, and then you can select whatever photos you have taken when you were at Riverwood and you can upload them. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? So you don't have to use data when you're at Riverwood for taking photos with your phone. You go home and you use your Wi-Fi on your phone and you can submit all of those photos that you took um, on your phone and through the app. Is there a follow-up question? Does that answer your question? Let me know, Tricia. I'm just going to check Facebook too if there's any questions on here. I haven't looked. Uh, there's another question. If I'm not sure about a species, can I identify my observation by genus? Yes. So um, if you're not sure about the species um, and it doesn't really look like what iNaturalist is suggesting, you don't have to select species. You can select this, the genus or the family even. And that will give you an option in iNaturalist too. So you don't have to even select a specific species if you're not completely sure. Um, you can suggest a family or a genus as well. I just see a response here. No, my phone doesn't have that. I'll perhaps see you sometime. Okay, I will see you sometime on, at Riverwood. Um, and we'll go through that together. Are there any other questions that are coming up? Trisha comes to Riverwood quite often. She's a great volunteer with us. So are there any other confusions or questions that I can answer for anyone? Anything that's on your mind? Oh, I see people signed up. Good job. That's awesome. We just had two more people sign up. So good job, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe I'll... Uh... Just making sure everyone, well, how about I put my email
So I put my email down in the chat bar as well. So if you do have any further questions about the BioBlitz, please feel free to email me. Um, I would be happy to chat more about it. Um, if you want supplementary uh, webinars on this topic, feel free as well. And then I hope that everyone has a chance to sign up for some upcoming programs with us. And we'll be describing our naturalists and the ongoing project in BioBlitz throughout this entire month. So if you join one of our programs, we'll have one-on-one -on -one time to actually go through um, how to use iNaturalist. It can be confusing at first, but I will say it's very simple once you first understand it. And the simplest way is to use your phone. I would think that the phone is a little bit more user-friendly than the website, but if you prefer to use your camera, um, your uh, better camera and upload that to your computer as well, the website works just as well. And once again, thank you everyone um, for joining today. Thank you for all of your questions. And I hope I see you on site at Riverwood throughout this month um, and see you observing some cool species. So thanks everyone for joining and have a great day. Good luck, everyone.